Hey guys, welcome back to Network Chuck. So a little something different this time, it's gonna be a technical video, and it's over one of my favorite topics, collaboration. A while back I did a video on calling search spaces and the partitions and class of control within call manager. So if you don't remember that, or if you haven't seen that, check it out here before watching this video. You don't have to, but it helps kind of bring all this together. It's my series on dial plans. So man, solid stuff. So this time we're going to cover something cool and we have a big issue. Like we have a really big issue. I always say the best way to learn something and actually cement it into that brain is to tackle a problem or get your hands dirty. So that's what we're going to do. There's a big problem with the Empire's phone system. The, uh, the collaboration engineer who installed the Empire's phone system, he missed a critical piece. Now, to be fair, it wasn't his fault. He uh, kind of encountered an unfortunate end. In the rebel's hidden fort. Whatever the case, he's not around and he missed an essential part of the dial plan. He forgot to add routing outside. So within the Death Star, they can all call each other, that's fine. Uh, stormtrooper to Stormtrooper, Captain to Stormtrooper, uh, Darth Vader to the Emperor, what have you. That's all working great. But when they need to call outside to another planet, another system, it's not happening. That part was not configured, so w w what do we do? Add on another problem, Captain Tarkin. You remember him? He has a unique problem that we have to tackle right now. The Stormtroopers, something's been going on there. There's been talk of desertion. He's going to schedule a team building event. And what better place than the Moss Eisley Cantina on Tatooine? <laughs> Problem is, he's got to call ahead and book that event. He can't call out. He can't reach out to Tatooine. He cannot call the Moss Eisley Cantina. We have a huge problem. So therein lies our task. We have to create a route group, a route list, and a route pattern to allow our phone system to dial out to another planet. Let's tackle this right now. All right guys, here we go. It's time to go over what the junk are route patterns, route list, and route groups. I know you've asked me about this before, so I wanna make sure we cover this. This is part of my dial plan series. And what better way to explain anything with Cisco or technology than with Star Wars? As I've said before, Cisco is very hierarchical. It's very, you know, top to bottom, bottom to top, and how they design their stuff. The way you can figure this is route group to route list to route pattern. And we're going to focus on the route group first. Route groups are awesome. They're the backbone of this. So let's go ahead and go through it. So what is a route group? They are essentially just a group of gateways and trunks. So one thing about this route group, route list, route pattern situation is that you can bypass the entire hierarchy. You can actually have just the route pattern go directly to one of these devices here, a gateway or a trunk. So you can figure your pattern and you just go directly with one of these bad boys. You don't have to worry about the whole route group or route list thing. You don't have to configure all this stuff. You know what? And that's great for a very simple configuration, but what's often simple may not be the best. So if we can use a route pattern to bypass the route group and route list and go directly to the trunk or the gateway, why waste time with any of this? Glad you asked. First big point, Cisco said to. And you know what? You have to do what Cisco says or Tack will just get mad at you. No, not really. But Cisco's best practice, they do post a, a, their SRND best practice guide. They tell you this is what they want you to do. This is how they design the system. And I do agree. The second big reason is that it allows for scalability. You know, within a route group, you can add two, three more devices. And the, that gives you redundancy, it gives you failover. So when you're designing your, your phone system, when you're designing your dial plan, you can't just think about the one single path because if, you're, if you've been in IT for any amount of time, you know one path equals failure because that, that thing is gonna fail. I can't tell you how many times I ha I've had a, a, a cube device fail or, or a gateway or a PRI gateway fail and shame on me, I didn't have a failover. So you know what, the phone system went down. That made me look bad. Even though it was out of my control, the issue that was happening, it was in my control to make sure that redundancy was there. This, this is huge. You wanna make sure you do this. Now the third biggest reason, and it's awesome, is route list. Route lists give you so much 
when you're configuring a path to the outside. If you're going route pattern to trunk or gateway directly, you lose a lot of the, the, the scalability and digit manipulation that you could put on a wider scale and make your life a lot easier. And frankly, you can't do the route list thing without a route group, which is why it's important. So route group is there to group your devices in however way and whatever way you need to do it. You could have a lot of devices. You could just have a few. You could maybe just have redundant PSTN gateways. So you know what? That's enough theory. Let's uh, let's get our hands dirty. Let's get into call manager and let's see how you configure these things. So here we are in CUCM call manager on the CUCM administration page. Don't judge me, I know. I don't have any licenses and I'm gonna expire here in 20 days. I'll figure it out, don't worry. So what we're gonna do here is get our route group configured. And we're gonna configure two route groups, one for the Leia cube and one for the Luke cube. Now, they're named that way by the previous collaboration engineer. Maybe that's why he met his unfortunate demise. Don't know, but let's go ahead and do this. So we already have our trunks configured. So we'll go over here to device and trunk, take a look at what we have. So we've got Luke, we've got Leia. I even have the SIP options ping, so we know they are up. Let's go configure our route groups. So we'll mosey on over to call routing, route hunt, and then over to route group. Going to find, we have nothing here. This guy did not do his job. I mean, can't blame him, he got force choked. So let's go ahead and take care of this for him, or really for us. So we'll click add new. What's our name? Let's just say Leia Cube. We've got a few uh, options here. Since we're only putting one in this route group, it doesn't really matter for us, but top down circular, here we go. Now let's, this is where we decide which cube we're gonna choose. Let's go ahead and, uh, no, I don't wanna choose Luke. Choose Leia, add to route group, and click save. That's simple. So we have our route group name, distribution algorithm. We've got our device. You can see that it's configured and ready to go. Uh, we have an as successful. We've got Leia down here, verified as a SIP trunk. If you click that link, I'll take you right to her. Kind of cool. Go back. Oh, doesn't like that. Curse UCUCM. And you notice that the configuration's pretty simple because all this pretty much is is just adding a device to a group, a little container. And then let's go ahead and get our Luke cube going. Done. So here we've got our Leia cube, we got our Luke cube. Now we can move on to the route list. We are one step closer to avoiding the same fate as that other guy. Okay, we're finally on to the fun stuff. Okay, come on, let's be honest. All of this was amazingly fun. So that should tell you how fun route lists are. So here we are, route list. Well, this is, and really in my opinion, the bread and butter of this entire process here. What are route lists? What do they, what do, they do? They're basically just a prioritized list of route groups. That's pretty much it. No, that's that's basically what they are. They are so much more. Now, remember what I said earlier. A route pattern, which we'll get into here in a second, it can either point to, so let's just say this is our, our route pattern right here. Do not make fun of my skills in drawing here. This is our route pattern. It can point either directly to the Luke, uh, the Luke uh, cube over here, or it can point to a route list, which then points to a route group, which then points to a SIP trunk or a PSTN gateway, you know, what have you. But that begs the question, why do it that way? What is so great about a route list? What does it give us that just a simple route pattern to SIP trunk configuration does or doesn't? One huge thing it gives, and this is awesome, is digit manipulation. And not just digit manipulation, but digit manipulation per route group. I mean, seriously, that saves us a lot of time and configuration. We'll go into more of this on the route pattern, but basically, instead of having to configure multiple route patterns for gateways that might require, or um, or PSTNs who might require different handoffs of, of digits, we can just create one route pattern and the route list will do everything for us. Now I know right now that doesn't make a lot of sense. When I get into the configuration, when I go over route patterns, this will totally make sense for you. So I wanna make sure I haven't lost you yet. Remember the hierarchy, we've got route group, which contains our devices, route list, which is the prioritized list of route groups, and then coming up, the route pattern, here in a bit. Now what a route list gives you also, and, and where it's typically used in the real world, is it, it gives you a path to your primary while giving you a, f a backup path to your failover or a redundant connection. Now, in our scenario, we have to get uh, Captain Tarkin the ability to call Tatooine, to call Moss Eisley, and schedule this team building event, or the, 
the Galactic Empire will implode. I, I'm pretty sure that's gonna happen, so it's, it's on our shoulders. We have to solve this problem. But what if, my goodness, what if the Sip Trunk and the Path to Leia and the PSTM we're using over here, what if that goes down? Uh, then we are done. Uh, we might have a special audience with Lord Vader. Who knows? So we want to make sure we have a redundant path. A backup path just in case something goes wrong. Have you ever seen Star Wars? Things go wrong. But we're gonna make something different. We're actually gonna prepare for these kind of things. So our path to Leia will be our primary path and the PSTN she's connected to. PSTN. Our secondary path will be out this route group to Luke to our secondary PSTN. The PSTN with this one, the former collaboration engineer just, he made a bad deal. So it cost a ton of money to go out this. Minutes are just ridiculous. Per or The cost per minute is just outrageous. So we don't wanna use this too often. And also, and also the way we hand off our digits to these guys is totally different than how we hand it off to Leia. So we have to figure out how to cleanly make this work. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a little bit about collaboration if you are not already in this. If you're studying for your search or you're a collaboration engineer, then I'm hoping this helps you. This is something I picked up from my studies, from day to day, and um, hopefully it helps you. If you haven't already, subscribe. Uh, we, we're at 7,500 now, so that's amazing. Thank you so much for sticking with me. The giveaway is ending on the 15th at 11.59 p.m. Central. So if you haven't already entered to win the CCNA INE giveaway, enter there. I'll put a, there'll be a link below. Well, anyways, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Let's get certified together. Catch you next time. So yeah, if you want to uh, be like Walter, if you want to make coffee like Walter White,